This week's Ion MPI is brought to you by DigiKey Native Fruit and Analog Devices is Ion MPI this week. Lady Data, what is Ion MPI this week? Okay, this week's Ion MPI is the LT3960. Uh, Linear Tech, of course, was purchased by Analog Devices. So this is a kind of a collab between the two. Uh, but since it's uh, now owned by Analog Devices, they get the credit. So this is an interesting chip uh, that popped up in digikey.com slash new. And I'm going to make a breakout for it. Uh, so I picked up uh, the eval board. Um, what's neat about this chip is it is a chip that converts I squared C into uh, a CAN bus physical layer for transport. What that means is, um, as you see here on the left, you have a uh, microcontroller and it's an I squared C controller or master. And you want to connect to a sensor or a device that's controllable over I squared C, uh, I squared C peripheral. And you know, normally I squared C is meant to be like inter-circuit. That's what the I2 stands for, inter or yeah, inter-circuit communication. And it's meant to be on like a single circuit board. Um, however, nowadays there's so many sensors and devices that might be remote. You might have a temperature sensor, a humidity sensor, or a magnetic sensor, something in your robot or your automation. And you might want it a little bit farther or um, connected by wires that are longer than a, a few inches or maybe even longer than a meter. Or perhaps you have a lot of EMI because it's in a robot or something, there's motors everywhere. And I squared C is a single ended um, physical protocol. You have a ground, you have a clock line and a data line. It's non-differential. It's designed to be simple because again, it's meant to be on a circuit. But you know, we're engineers, we like to push the limits. So what if you want to have your I squared C peripherals far away? Well, that's where this chip comes in. Um, so sometimes, or normally, what you would do is you'd get a separate microcontroller and have that be on a CAN bus, and then it reads the sensor data and transfers it over CAN bus messages. You give this a CAN bus to I2C conversion. This doesn't turn your I2C device into a CAN bus device, but what it does do is basically transmit the clock and data as if it was like CAN bus physical compatible, which allows it to go very far distances. Um, so if you look inside, there's no microcontroller. It's really just like a logic level differential signaling system. It's just designed very, very well. Um, so this is the block diagram for uh, one side, and each side can either be a controller or a peripheral. You can configure it either way. Um, and then this is how it works. So at the top, you can see the clock and data. You see the clock going up and down and the data going up and down. And then kind of in the middle, you can see it's converting each one and zero into a differential or non-differential signal. So when the two uh, clock lines or the two data lines are far apart in voltage, you know, six to 10 volts apart, uh, that's a one. And when they're the same voltage, that's a zero. So this is just a much more uh, EMI and physical distance and capacitive uh, insensitive way of transmitting data. Again, you can't share this on a CAN bus, but you can share multiple I squared C devices on this bus using this uh, transceiver. Uh, so here's an example of a multi-drop. So um, you know, on the other side of this, you'd have the controller, but you can have multiple I squared C peripherals either on one transceiver converter or multiple transceiver converters uh, on your, as you can see, terminated. The 120 ohm is the, the terminated uh, CAN bus physical uh, interface. They call it I2 CAN bus, whatever, I2 CAN. Mm. Um, and then you can see uh, you can go quite fast. So this is, I think, uh, you know, 400 megahertz is pretty common, um, but, you know, depending on uh, how long the distance of your cable is, you see the bus length. There's a calculation, you know, depending on your twisted pair and the capacitance, it'll, it'll depend on it. But I think up to, you know, if you're doing 100 kilohertz, you can either get into 100 meters easily. This is 400 kilohertz. Um, and it's happily running at up to 15 meters. Um, and that's assuming, you know, you don't even do any uh, special tuning or anything. And perhaps even you could do five volts uh, differential instead of three volts, uh, and that would get you even uh, better distances. So there's um, an eval board that's available. I'll say that at the time of this viewing, filming, the chip itself is an NPI, it's not in stock, but sign up and you get notified. Um, there's an eval board, <clears throat> and I also got a separate eval board that is uh, two like endpoints that you can connect together. This one has a uh, lighting controller, so you can use this to kind of test uh, the cabling and distance. And then they have um, some Arduino code and Arduino library as well. So what I thought this would be really good for is if you have you know a sensor network, um, like you're doing agriculture or you're doing robotics, 
and you have your sensors spread out over a building or a very large machine. Um, and instead of having individual CAN bus nodes, which again is totally fine, you can do that if you'd like, but you know, before you know it, now you need a special CAN bus enabled mic controller and like CAN bus mic controllers are expensive and not, maybe you've already written your code for uh, AVR or a SAMD or you know, uh, whatever mic controller that you've already decided on and, and you really like for the pricing and other peripherals, you don't have a CAN bus uh, peripheral in it so now you have to get an external canvas peripheral. Before you know it, your bill of materials for every note is like five to ten dollars. Instead, um, you can take <coughs> one of these chips, the LT3960, and just like stick it onto the end of this. And then um, you know you can use Cat5, for example. And here's a Cat5 to you know wiring converter, um, and then use some long Cat5 cable. Another thing that was kind of neat about this uh, adapter chip is not only does it do that physical transference from I squared C to can physical, but it also has it up to like a 40 or 60 volt input LDO. And so you could actually, you know, if you have extra wires on your CAT5, not only can it pass the CAN data, the differential CAN data and the ground data, you can also pass a high voltage uh, data power signal, right, 40 to 60 volts. And so that will easily survive any like really long distance wire that'll cause a voltage drop like you wouldn't be able to have three volts go over your long cable because it would drop down a volt by the end and then you know now you're you have too much noise and uh you're not able to power your peripherals but if you pass 20 volts or 24 volts and then linearly uh regulate it down the other end you could have a really nice clean signal uh to power your end node so i thought that was kind of a cool uh add-on it's kind of a freebie you get with this chip um so i have a quick demo to show, hold on, let me get my, my demo going here. Hold on. So what I've got here is a uh, Cutie Pie. So this is a, a SAMD21, uh, which just has a um, I squared C connection. And I'm going to, hold on. I've clipped it onto this uh, eval board from analog featuring the LT. Uh, featuring the LT3960. So, sorry, this is the mic controller. The mic controller goes here into the LT3960. And then over here we have a really long uh, five con uh, six conductor cable. I'm just not using the six conductor. And these two are electrically separate. They're mechanically connected, but they're electrically separated. And over here we've got an OLED screen and then uh, risky to do this live demo, but I think I can, I can pull Super this off. risky. Super risky. Uh, I'm going to just power, this isn't data, this is just a, a powering it from a, a LiPo battery over here. Just because it, the power I'm not passing through the cable. And then I reset this circuit and voila! The microcontroller is sending I squared C data at 400 kilohertz over this cable through this long cable, which believe me, you cannot do I squared C 400 kilohertz over this long ass cable to the other uh, transceiver, which is uh, peripheral, to the OLED display. So you can do very long distance I squared C. And even if I had motors or even a longer cable, um, this would work just fine. It's a great way to have I squared C, a very popular peripheral controller uh, protocol, but make it go super long like CAN bus. It's like the best of both worlds. All right, available at DigiKey. And we have the information here for you. You can look at the part number or the short URL. LT3960. And that is this week's INWPI. Hi, on MPI.